Hey there, fellow travelers, Mark and Jocelyn with Walter's World. And we want to welcome everybody back for the end of August live travel q and A. I know for a lot of people, the end of August is not when you're really thinking about travel. It's when you're thinking about kids back to school, getting back to work, getting back in the swing of things. I kind of think that means it's the best time to think about travel because um, the rest of life is too crazy. So it's your escape. Exactly. That's one of the things we recommend to people is if you're going to be traveling the fall, actually you can save a lot of money. Like tickets to Europe can be significantly cheaper. You're going to go like the end of September, early October. October. You can literally save a thousand dollars per ticket going from the U S to Europe and other places. So think about it, you know, check the weather patterns. But that is one of those things that I tell my students all the time, like, Hey, when you're when you got the job, don't travel in the summer. Save the money and go in the late fall, like early fall. You know when everybody's back in school because you can save quite a bit of money. But today we're going to talk. We're going to answer your questions. But there's some things we want to talk about in travel because there's been some travel news lately. I know a lot of people are worried about the the visas for Americans and Canadians in Europe. It's not that big of a deal. We'll go through that here in a few minutes. Um, we're also going to talk about what to kind of expect for 2024 in prices. Because the word around those hotels are expecting prices to drop quite a bit um, as people's bent up, I will pay anything it takes to stay anywhere. I don't care if you rip me off, <laughs> is really going out the door because of inflation. And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about some ugly tourists as well later on. But I want to go just give you an idea of what we're going to talk about throughout the live feed and some other things. And as people are getting on, because we got here a little bit early, but... Uh, yeah, I'll give you a little background on our travels this summer. It was a busy travel summer. We uh, Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, we see. crammed a lot into we, this summer. We did cram it a lot. I ended up in uh, Spain, Portugal, and Andorra. If you saw those videos. We got tons of Spain. Tons of Spain videos and Portugal videos are coming. Uh, for those you're looking to go, we have tons of new content from there. It was there about a month. Uh, I was actually teaching there, having a good time, staying with with Barcelona, Cordoba, all kinds of places. It was really fun. Um, and then got back home. We were in Wisconsin. So our Wisconsin, those Wisconsin videos doing very well. So uh, the SFIB had a good time when we were up there. Um, I did enjoy it. Yeah. So then uh, then after that, we did a family trip to. Uh, oh, we went to. <laughs> you part of the family. We went there. to Israel, um, Palestine, Jordan, Malta, and Greece. And we crammed that into just under a month. That yeah, was a lot. and it was when everything was insanely hot. Like in Athens, they were have mercy. They were closing the Acropolis in the afternoon, so that's why if you ever saw our over tourism in in Greece video, that was one of those days. So everybody came early, and it was it was insane. And they're now going to cut it down to twenty thousand visitors. They're limiting it to twenty thousand visitors a day to the Acropolis, but they generally get twenty three thousand. So when people are freaking out, going, "Oh my God, I'm not going to be able to get in." There's only 3,000 that aren't going to be able to get in. Yeah, it's not it, that tough. And it's going to be planned out. So what's nice, is like, from what I understand, it's going to be over time kind of thing. Yes. So you can buy different times of the day. So then you can get there because that's what was happening those days. It was closed when it was super hot. Everybody was going to be the first person there. So the lines were <laughs> insane. All right. So I see there's a lot of people asking questions Lots on here. Questions. So Love seeing that. Thank you very much, um, everybody. Adam asks, do you recommend a travel agent or making a list of things to do? Um, we typically do it on our own, depending on where we're going. We did actually contact a travel company, a tour company in Israel so that we could see Israel, Palestine, Jordan, all of that. Um, have drivers to take us and have it. Yes. It was just us because we looked at we had a private tour. Yeah, we, you can you could drive. You could do Israel on your own. You can drive on your own Certainly. if you want. Um, but you couldn't drive to Palestine because your rental car won't be isn't allowed in there. So that's one of the things you have to kind of know. So we, we used a, a company to help us out with that just to make it easier so we could spend the time enjoying our time there versus trying to figure out all the other things. So that was that was kind of nice. But it was actually great. And doing it private meant we had the time to make videos. Yeah. And we made a lot of those. Yes. We <laughs> like I made I think I made I still think I did more in the Spain Portugal part because that was just me. Because I was so lonely alone. without you guys. I had to do something yeah, to make it yeah. through. So we did that. Okay. But yeah. Um, and Tony asks, how difficult is it to go without hotel reservations in October in Italy? I think you're going to be fine. You'll be fine. The, the only thing I would look out for is if you're going to be going, yeah, you, you'll be fine. Like, you'll, like, like going like you, where? I was, like, I was trying to think, it's like when, I was like trying to think when the fashion weeks are for Milan or when some big events. No, October sure, will be fine. Maybe in Milan during fashion week. But I mean, I've been, I've been in a place in Italy where I had nothing to, nowhere to stay in the summer. And I'm like. Hey, you got something? And I really found, like I found stuff right by the Milan 
Duomo. And I'm like, oh, I need to stay and pick her up and Liam up last year. And I was like, yeah, that worked out. Yeah, so we've like, oh, yeah, we got plenty of rooms. So, yeah, the, 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 there's there's always a few things that pop up. Like, we, there's a lot there. Oh, Kevin. oh, Kevin, thank you for the hey, Walter. Uh, super thank you very chat. much for the super chat, my Canadian friend. Hey, Walter, going to Portugal, Madeira, very nice cool. in three weeks. I was wondering about nothing, <laughs> everything's <laughs> fine. I have no question, just want to say you rock. Dude, Kevin, you rock. Have fun. Get the Madeira wine, and if they if they cook anything in the Madeira wine. Oh, Bife de Madeira. Bife de Madeira is really good. You got some it's really my favorite it's, favorite because Portuguese food like the, the Azores and Madeira has some specialties there, like the meat stuff there, which seems weird when it's like you know the island. But they have some pretty like Azores. I think is a little bit better meat, yeah. but like Madeira has good stuff too. You'll see. You're gonna eat well, but you already got it set up, so you don't need our help. So uh, thank have you for fun, the super my chat, friend. Though. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, okay. uh, David. Lisbon, Porto, Madeira, San Miguel, Tercera. Thanks for the great advice. Hey, glad we could help out. I'm glad I got new Portugal videos from because we haven't been since like 2018, 19. And so, so it was not, no, wait. Yeah, go ahead. That's our second yeah, that, 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 that whole, that, that whole COVID thing. Break. I was like, wait, didn't we? COVID oh, yeah, that COVID. kind of threw a lot off. Yeah, so, but it was good to get back. I, I was there and I could really see, um, was really trying to make a lot of videos to help travelers because there's a lot. That's one thing I've seen with um, with a lot of the new content on like Instagram and TikTok. There's a lot of really good stuff like to inspire you to go places, but not necessarily a lot of good information to help you. And there's actually a lot of bad travel hacks I've been seeing. Like I've been seeing people recommending things that will get you banned from airlines, arrested, arrested, you know, TSA not happy with you, or you're going to have to pay like triple because your bag. You know, like the, all the tricks, like how you don't have to pay the 30 euros or $30 for a luggage, do this. And I'm like, $30 is worth being able to fly that airline again. <laughs> exactly. So, so that was why I, we were really like, I need to start making more. So you'll see there's a lot of, uh, on our shorts channel, there's a lot of the cut up videos, but you're going to start seeing more of the film specifically intentional, intentional videos. So if you go down to the, in our description, there's a link to the YouTube shorts channel, but it will be very intentional ones explaining travel tips in the short version because there's been so many just i'm like i mean i the, uh, all the ai ones too and i'm like this is horrible the, the people are going to get hurt and i'm just i got to do something so we started to, we have all kinds of new series that are going to be coming to uh build up and all that but anyway travel freak freak 2019 good to have you back if i want to spend five days four nights in tokyo from texas how much time do you need to have vacation time i was thinking wednesday to monday january 2024 but i want to know how much time off do i need okay so when you fly over you Go, but there's the international date line, so you kind of land on the same day, but you're really wiped out. But Josh will tell you we use Jetsum, but we don't talk about medical stuff on here because YouTube does not allow that, oh. uh, so we're not talking about that. But if I talked to your doctor about um, jet, um, sleep aids and things to help with the jet lag, but I don't that's know, right. Wednesday to Monday, like you leave Wednesday, get their money, but like <clears throat> that's really short. He just wants to go to Tokyo. Oh, you know to Tokyo. I think that that's fine. Yeah, you could just do it. Tokyo. Uh, the thing is, you're just getting a little tiny taste. And but, if you're going to, depending on what you've spent on the tickets, like it's a big trip. And because it takes so much time to get there for us personally, when we're going somewhere that far, we want a lot of time. But if you're not able to do that, yeah, I think that's enough time for just Tokyo. Yeah. And when, what you'll see is Tokyo, there's like parts of the city. You're going to focus on a part of the city. Each like day. I focus on each day because otherwise it's too much. Like you can, the subway is easy enough to get around. Um, but just because there's so much to see in those, that, that's one thing I'd say. Rafa, I love this. I'm not first. I'm not last. When Walter's World live streams click, I click fast. I love it. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> that is super cute. nice of you. Uh, let's that's see. Great. Oh, sorry. It's jumping around. Oh, it's so ju much. So here's one. Mike BS. Thank you. Well, first off, Mike, thank you very much for the thank super you, chat. Mike. I appreciate it. Hi, do you recommend a travel credit card to get most the most deals? Okay, so here's one of the things you have to think about when it comes to credit cards. If you see websites promoting credit cards, realize they get a nice kickback from that. Like the points guy, they make tons of cash or tons of points stuff because they recommend credit cards. That's one thing you have to say. So I have to say that as well. We do not have any affiliate programs, so we're being honest with this. I tell people travel credit cards can be good if you travel a lot. 
However, if you only fly once a year with United or once a year with Delta, it's not, it's not worth it for you to get that credit card and pay the $100 or $400 or $500 fee to have that travel card. It might be better for you to find a credit card that gives you like 5% cash back or 3% cash back because that will actually make you more money. But it really comes down to what what you're going to use if you're going to be able to travel. And, um, you know, if you are traveling a lot and you're taking, you know, a couple international trips a year and several domestic trips a year and you want to do that and you're working for status or things like that um if you can if you know you're going to be flying with mainly one airline because you live in atlanta so you're going to be flying with delta primarily then that's that's the that's the type of card you should look at you know getting a delta branded card or whatever um and they all have different ranges so if you know you're going to be stuck with one airline and you can commit to that airline, do that. That can pay up. But then if you can't, sometimes it's better to do like, what is it, Chase Sapphire or Chase Reserve? Chase, Chase and these Sapphire things, Reserve. Yeah. And, um, they, and, these, and that goes over a lot of different yeah, and, companies, not just airlines. But yeah. Just and so that, that can pay up because I know there's people that will literally like their entire hotels will be paid for. But also like if you're thinking I'm going to use points to pay for my hotels in Europe, you're not going to get really traditional European hotels a lot. You're going to get more Americanized, chain hotel, Americanized hotels, chains. which doesn't give you the same thing. Yeah. Um, Blaine from Raleigh, I don't know how to travel because I love the Alabama Crimson Tide. <laughs> Crazy man. Go dogs. Yeah, so there's <laughs> other. Hey, Mark Finley, good to see you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Mark. Oh, Sean. Sean, first long haul, 20-hour flight to Vietnam next Friday. I'm 6'6", six, six, flying a comedy. Any suggestions? Oh. We'll pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you can get an aisle seat, Get the aisle seat because at least you can put that one leg out. Just know that when they come, those long flights, they, they have no patience. They're just like flying through those carts. So you might lose your leg, but it might be more comfortable that way to try to get that um, little however, part However, I'm going to say this. Next Friday, there's probably not a ton of people going to Vietnam right now. So like if there are spaces um, open on, on seats, you know, you can move your, your seat sometimes. So if you see open spaces or if it's like, a two three two flight or something you might try to get an aisle um where you've got like you're on an aisle and someone else is on the aisle and that middle seat is empty that might just give you a little bit more space. all flights are packed playing for no extra seats anywhere well just tell, if there he, is one move your seat yeah if there is one <laughs> in, a, in a wonderful world and in a disnified world like going into the batman's question if you get a bulkhead or you get a an exit row seat you've got a little more room but you may not be able to recline in an exit row so that's suck. Kind of sorry man that. so the batman thank you very much for the super chat <laughs> I'm planning a Disney trip next year. Do you recommend a travel agent to make sure you get what you want or just work with Disney to figure it out? Mm -hmm. So I would say with this, there are so many travel agents that specifically focus on Disney. I might go with that because I don't know if you've got your family with you. I don't know if, you, if it's just you or a couple or something because the Disney travel agent can help you know like who will get you, how you can get the best fast passes, how you, when you can sign up, how to get the right princesses if you want to do the lunches. And a normal travel agent can help with that because that's a very popular kind of thing for travel agents. But finding one that specializes in Disney, that would be that would be worth the cost because honestly, using travel agents, they only get a small percentage of stuff. So sometimes it's worth it to save yourself the hassle. And with this, and you want to make it a really special thing, I'd probably go with a Disney travel agent for that. So, yes, Jocelyn. I was just reading other things. I'm with Lori. I save my airline points for business class. So, I use mine for upgrades and free flights. Yeah. Thank you, Lori Gallegos. I know it doesn't show up here, but thank you very much. We appreciate it. Oh, Harriet. Hey, and I, oh, guys, Jimmy. Hey, Harriet and I just came back from Portugal. Love Guimarães, Queen Bird, and Kashkai. She was hot and humid in central Portugal. Yeah. So here's one thing people don't realize. Um, the hottest part of Portugal isn't the south coast, isn't the coast, it's inland. You go to the Alentejo region. We have a video on the Don'ts of Evra. And Alentejo is super hot, super dry, super, well, it's humid then, but it's just uncomfortable sometimes. Like, that's the hottest part of Portugal. So, yes, that can be a bit much. But glad you all had a good time. For those of you who are looking to go to Portugal, um, if you go to Guimarães, that's where actually Portugal was founded. That's Stone one City. of my favorite It's a pretty towns. cool place. It is a very cool town. So this lorry... Just got back from Greece, Athens, Santorini, and Crete. Which of the islands do you all enjoy? We go to Crete the most because there's we have family, we have family there. there. So, so 
Um, we're not the typical Greek travelers because of my family. Um, so we don't necessarily do the things other people do. Um, but Crete's definitely our place, right? For island yeah. stuff. Thank you, Cincy. I'm glad you're on personal time off. I love that channel. That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you so much. So let's see. Paid time off, my love. Paid time off. What did I say? You said personal. Oh. I mean, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I guess it would be that. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's paid. There you go. Yes. So, Mr. Bike, what's the best way to exchange money in Europe? I recently went to Sicily. Exchange rate real bad. ATM cards and banks charge huge fees. So, honestly, I find the best exchange rate is your local bank ATM from back home and going to a bank ATM, not a, like, Euronext or whatever. Like, the private ones, they'll destroy you. Find a bank and do that. And sometimes the fees are horrible. Like, in Spain, it was, like, 7 euros in some places to exchange money. Some places, it's only a few, couple euros. But the thing is, it's the exchange rate that'll get you. So sometimes they'll ask for if you want to take the conversion and they'll be like, oh, we'll give you don't like, take don't take it because they're going to give you the worst exchange rate. What's going to win for them, not for you. Um, so that's it. And the thing is, taking cash and finding exchange houses don't really exist. Like they do exist. Like if you go to Prague, where there's a lot of different currencies that go through in Switzerland. But if you're going through France and Germany, Portugal, Spain, even the UK, it's sometimes hard to find exchange houses. So just be aware of that. So that's why... There may be the fees, but take out the money. If you're going to be taking out euros, take a couple hundred out. One thing I would say now is like after the pandemic, so many places now are just only credit card that sometimes you just need one of those tap and go credit cards and that's going to be most of your stuff. So do you need some help? Um, no, I was just. So Lori, thank you very much again, Lori. Um, which Christmas markets do you recommend? Germany, and Austria, Switzerland, and France. I would do Germany and Austria. I've gone to all four. I have enjoyed all four, but Germany is by far my winner. And then Austria second, then France, then Switzerland. I would agree wholeheartedly. That, that that would be the way I would I would do it. We don't even disagree on that. I know. <laughs> okay, Daniel Jose wants to know. Hello, you two. Have you heard anything about the new? It's ETIS. Okay. Yeah. So what this is when people talk about oh Americans and Canadians now have to get visas to go to Europe. Well, first off, your European friends would go, it's not a visa, it's a visa waiver. So therefore, it even says it's not a visa, it's a visa waiver. <laughs> All you're going to have to do, at least 72 hours before you fly to Europe, and that's the key thing, it has to be before 72 hours, you basically go online, put in your passport information, tell them where you're going to go, and put in like three or four other things, like na like basically what's on your passport and where the first country you're going to go to. And that's literally it. And then they get back to sometimes like in a minute, and sometimes it's within 72 hours just in case. And that they tell you it's okay um, and you can go. They don't like it's, they well, say. How much is it though? It's like seven bucks, I, I was eight thinking bucks. It was, it was like less than ten. Yeah, it's less than ten dollars, right. and it's valid for three years. Or if your passport expires in less than three years, then it expires, and your passport expires. Uh, so you know that. But it is super simple, and people are like, "Well, that's horrible." Well, we do. We have the ESTA program for when travelers come to the U.S. The Europeans come to the U.S. They fill the same simple forms. It's a few bucks. I mean, it's one of those things. I'm like, couldn't you just have that on your plane ticket, and you can make money every time people fly in <laughs> versus a one-time fee thing. And and the thing is, right now it's set for a January release, but this thing has been pushed back so many times. I've, I've filmed the video on this, I think, three times. And the third time, <laughs> literally, I filmed it. And after I filmed it, it, like, and we were in Northern Italy, and like two weeks later, and I'm like putting the video together in my computer, they announced, oh, we're postponing it until another year. And I'm like, some... <laughs> And if you go some biscuit, so if you go and look on my video on it, it actually says like, dude, it changed again. So don't be surprised if it changes again. So so don't be freaked out about it. I know it will impact some people because it'll be that one thing like, ah, I'll just go someplace else. Don't let it stop you. Uh, so you have that. But uh, yeah, let's see. Whoa, Gabe, my bank charged fifteen dollars every time I use my debit card in different countries in eighteen to twenty before they changed it. Yeah, but. Wow. Yeah, that's also another thing. There's also international transaction fees on credit right. cards. They'll charge you like 3% on things. Make sure you see if you have a card that has no international transaction fees because it might it's probably worth it just to sign up for a credit card to use when you travel that doesn't have that fee. And even if it's just that's the only time you ever use it, you'll save mm -hmm. it up there. 3D science, Philakia. <laughs> Kisses from Greece. Thank you. Karisto. Let's see. <laughs> Defiance. Look in your bookcase. What do you think? Who or what is your favorite travel guide? 
Um, I'm a Lonely Planet person. That's why I started backpacking Europe with those in the 90s and South America in the 90s. So, like, I've been, they've been my go-to because their maps are great. Uh, Rick Steves, my mom's actually right over there. She's going to hop on in a little bit. She's a big Rick Steves fan. She likes his, uh, like, hotels and restaurants. Um, there's a lot of good things out there, you know. Jocelyn. I'm, a, I'm a National Geographic girl because I read them before I go and I get all the history and the information. And then, um, yeah, it just enriches things for me. Yeah, so that's it. Hey, Stuart. Stuart. You're up late. Yeah, yeah. He's always up late. <laughs> always up late, man. You need to get a good bedtime, all right? So if you don't know, Stuart's been with us for, I don't know, a decade now, hanging out with us on live. So off to Corfu, end of the month, awesome. Hopefully it'll be cool. It will cool down then to the strip to Scarborough, November. Nice. Best place to change money in the UK is the post office. Yes, actually. Yeah. That is a good call. Stuart, thank you for that. That's a really good comment to get that because the post offices are all over and they do exchange and they don't rip you off. It's, like, it's an it, honest one. Or it's, it's an honest one. Like yes. they might charge you a little more because of they're doing the transaction for you, but it's not like, um, you know, it's not their business. Not egregious, yeah. Right. So there's that. Lady Chaos, thank you very much. Love from Illinois. Hey. Yeah. Friday Laura and I. There we go. Go dogs. ILL. Ha ha ha. Let's see. UGA. That's that's gonna be it. You say ILL and I say UGA. You didn't go to school there. I know. Anyway, so yeah, Megan, Megan, same ring. Here's another we're looking for the ATM stuff. We found Post Italia had the best ATM exchange with no extra fees in Italy. Yeah. And that's the thing is just make sure it's not a private one. That's one of my biggest things, but yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Richard, we were just in. It was right. Yeah. Here's one of those things. Um, I got to. I got to tell you, the the tourism this year was insane. Um, the numbers were back to pre-COVID levels of people traveling around. And I think one thing you have to realize is with that, people were all about people were all about traveling, and they were going to spend anything they could. Like, I don't care. I want to go. And I thought this would only be like 2021, 2022 when people were crazy travel. But it's like the fever pitch hit a crescendo in 2023. And people just throwing money, whether accommodation, going out, traveling, plane tickets, all kinds of stuff. It was almost like angry travel. With yeah. And, and that's why you saw a lot of those. Middle lay like, that person isn't real. Like, the, and you know, you see the idiots like in Trevi Fountain getting water and people breaking stuff and all kinds of ugly tourists that have been out there. It's just because there's so many people, so much that have been up demand. But then it was like, people were like, I don't care, whatever. I think next year with inflation, with higher, like just, not higher prices in travel. I think next year, and actually hotels are forecasting a 25% decline in hotel stay prices because people aren't going to be as willing to, I'll pay whatever it takes to go to Italy. I'll pay whatever it takes to go to Greece or stay in stay New York. Stay with Airbnb. Stay with Airbnb. And Airbnbs, they have their own issues because so many places overextended. People bought them to make them the vacation rentals. And then there's not enough tourists to go there. I mean, yes, places like New York and, and San Francisco and, and you know London will always have that. But other places destroy the market. And so now you'll see a lot of those will disappear going down. So I think next year's travel will be a bit cheaper uh, for stuff for like accommodation stuff. However, also what's going to impact it being the business professor I am, the impact of inflation on people's I mean think about it. You're going out to eat, you're going to get your groceries, there's less money left over to travel. So I think that's going to have an impact as well. Hang on. Hi Eric B. Um Joe, what's up buddy? Joe Schrader. Joe Schroeder. Traveling to London and Paris in November, is it worth to go to the top of the Eiffel Tower for first timers? Thanks. Go Moline Maroons. Boo! Blue Devils. Blue Devils. Quincy Blue Devils forever. Um, <laughs> Western Big Six. Um, so I would say this. No, it's not. Um, the, the time you're going to spend, the ask her. What did you think, babe? I mean. It was November. It was my it was birthday, in case you didn't remember. Really? Oh, shut up, Mark. It was really, really cold. It was November. Um, I don't know. I'm glad we did it. I'm, I'm glad to say that we did it. Um, we went up in the evening, and it really wasn't very crowded. So maybe if you can find a time when there's not a lot of people, it's it's worth that. But um, you know, seeing it uh, personally, as someone who studied architecture, I think seeing it from below is a lot better than seeing it from above. I would rather go up to um, Sakakur and look across and see it. Those are sort of my things. And my mother-in-law is sitting over here. She's going, yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's cool. Yeah. So Brian Smith Law and Franklin, the amazing child. <laughs> Thinking on dipping our toes in Switzerland next trip. Thoughts on Lucerne. Lucerne is my favorite town in Switzerland. I would Go. agree with that. Like that's what, it's the German part. Like you're going to Zurich and then you can take a train from there. But that's where you're going to see the mountains. It's going to be beautiful. It's not nowhere in Switzerland is cheap. There's nowhere even. There's not even a point to even discuss like, like McDonald's Happy Meals forty euros it's or not francs. That much. It's not. It's not that much. I'm joking, but it's expensive. But yeah. Lucerne is lovely. Yeah, well worth going to. Well worth the money you spend to be there. Like I, I would have no problem going there. Uh, so there's some other things. That's right, Nora. I and I. Ha ha ha. No, U G A. Right there. McKenna, another old favorite on the visa applications, New Zealand, Australia. It asks about when and how I was leaving from that country. What if my chance plans change when I'm there? It doesn't matter when you're there. It's only when you're going to go. Like there's actually people who will have a mock-up plane ticket and just so there's something there to hold so they can show they're going to leave. And then they change it later on. Yeah. So, I mean, they, I think they know plans change. They just want to know your general stuff. Yeah. Cause they want to make sure, cause that's one thing. If you're coming from certain countries or going into certain countries or your passports for certain countries and you don't have a continuing on, they might not let you in the country. Like that, that's one of those things you got to be careful with. I think our Ronnie dog Hill. ate something dead. What's up, buddy? I guess I'm looking forward to seeing some of Savannah in a few weeks. Yay! Ronnie's going to love it. I got a big Savannah blog coming out with a tons of stuff. Like, if you don't want to listen to my voice talking about Savannah and our, like, 25 Savannah videos to help you out, there's the one you can read <laughs> about it. I was there it, so. last week. Yeah, last just, go to our, just go to our waltersworld.com and you'll find stuff. Let's see. Oh, Balder MBA. Just want to say thank you for all the tips. It's been really helpful. Regards from Iceland. Thank you, my friend. Beautiful country, wonderful people, some of the most friendly people. Oh, ever. and such good food. Oh, thanks, Sue. Yowzers, one of our best commenters on Professor Walters, by the way. There you go. Um, let's see. Sharon, hey, I'm from Jerusalem. Did you visit my hometown? We did, loved it. Like, Jerusalem was fantastic. I, like, that one's gonna take me a while to get edited together because I filmed all of it with my phone. So, all the don'ts are like individual videos from all over the place so it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of time to edit that yeah so I, I think i have a tel aviv i think i've done some tel aviv either coming out this weekend or next weekend yeah but that was done in what two spots yeah that yeah that was with a, that was with my camera right. and the water behind me and oh that's so good food food fan israel fantastic food fantastic food let's see oh jim's going to bora bora i wish i would have been thoughts on hotel space get one of the bungalow things it's worth the, the money wire. Also, some of the places will let you, like, depending on when your flight is, they might give you a place, just leave your stuff so you can, like, actually have, a, like, a day rental, or they might give it to you for free. Mm. So think about that when you're going there. I'm interested you know, in, the, in your really... answer to this question. So Nora B., no one to travel with, including hubby who hates to travel. Well, whose fault is that? <laughs> Marry the wrong dude. What would either of you do if the other didn't want to travel anymore? We travel on our own. We do it anyway. Yeah. Like Joss, actually, it's funny. Jocelyn makes fun of me for traveling so much. But <laughs> technically speaking, she went on more trips last year than I did. It's true. So and I might be getting close to that again this year. I think so. Uh, yeah. I, I have more days traveling, but she has more different trips. So. Yeah. And that's one thing is I, I think that's one thing you could talk to your husband about. Be like, hey, if you're not going to go with me then I want to go like my mom, my dad doesn't always like to travel. So my mom and I go on trips together too. Like we were in France last year together and, and Switzerland and Germany. Um, this year, well, we went to, well, last year we also went to DC and Philadelphia together. We're going to go to Germany. Hopefully dad will come, but. Um, I do girls trips. I like to go um, with like I, my best friend, Sandra and I are very similar travelers. Um, my dear friend Lori, we have similar tastes on what we want to see and how we plan our day and stuff. So, you know, really think about how you get along with somebody and how you can travel with them. Yeah. Because yeah. maybe you have friends or siblings or in laws or something that you could go with too. Yeah. Jim and Harriet, thank you for another super chat. Thank you. Wait till travelers see their credit card bills for travel this year. Yeah. We agree <laughs> travel will slow next year. How you guys? We're doing good. We're doing good. We are. Yeah, I'll be honest. Like I saw, like on the trips this year. I mean, Israel's not a cheap, cheap trip, but like I could really, like I noticed it this summer. Where I was like, whoa, like yeah, the inflation that we all feel at the grocery store. Everyone's feeling everywhere. So I think that's gonna 
impact it might i mean i think people still travel but instead of being like a two-week vacation it might be 10 days or a month it might well, be well and weeks. maybe instead of going out to eat every day you're doing the things like we do when we go and have you know breakfast at home and, yeah. and you have the menu thing at lunch and and maybe you get stuff at the market and, and make dinner at night you know? yeah and that's one thing we did um in greece because of Portions were so big. We're like, we're there's four. Or actually, there was five of us, but we only got like three meals and yeah. a starter, and then we just kind of all shared. And that, I mean, that that cut down like well, four euros. That's how the food in Greece is meant to be. It's more like family style, um, and people to, Americans don't know that when they go there. But yeah, so you have way too much food. Yeah. But Mary, thank you very much. Thank just want to say hi. Love your Wisconsin videos. So accurate. I'm glad I could. We were up there, and I, I had to make one. I had I've had notes for the Jones, Wisconsin for so long, like so long. Like I meant to film it went up to Green Bay a, a couple years ago for a game. And I just did, like, it was one of those, I'm like, we might've had too many of the local <laughs> beers and uh, brandies, let's say. So I didn't get it filmed, but that's one uh, I'm glad. That it means a lot. Thank you very much. So I think Jocelyn's gonna hop out. I'm so tired, y'all. It's only like 8.30, I'm exhausted and I need to, I will fill you up on but, water and I'm gonna hand my chair over to the illustrious Kathy Walters. That's so right, bye babe. Thank bye you. Bye y'all, see ya. So next up we have my second traveling companion. Jocelyn has only passed this lady, a fun fact, my second most countries, well actually no, the boys have not passed you too. But she is the, outside of my children, Johnson is the only person I've traveled to more places with than this lady, Kathy Walters, <laughs> my mother. Uh, so if you have questions for Kathy, you can ask them Kathy, too. You want to drink? Uh, water would be great. Let's see. Oh, Mike Martinez. Where's Mike? Hey guys, Mike Martinez. Here. Oh, my, oh, this mythical Sphinx. I didn't know that was your name, you, Mike. I'm used to your other really great, your Instagram picture with the Walters world. This is um, Mark's. Um, do you want lemon in it? Sure. sure. I'll take lemon in it. <laughs> So let's see. Let's get back to some questions here. Ah, it's jumping around on me again. I can't read those. I'll, I'll read them out loud, Mom. Don't worry. <laughs> so Jackie, I'm traveling alone. Don't have a partner to travel with. So Mom, what about you? What do you think about, like, because I know Dad doesn't always want to travel. So what what is your thoughts on, like, traveling by yourself or finding friends? I mean, some, some places I would travel to by myself if I had been there before. I don't know that I would be so brave at my age to go somewhere that I've never been before. But I would look to what friends you have or discovering some new friends that you, you know, maybe take a day trip with, see how it works. You know, you may not want to have sleep in the same room. You may want to have two rooms and yet you go together, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, but I would look for some people that you really have a lot in common with that. They like to do the same things that you like to do mm -hmm. and that, and that, you know, it works. Interest. Yeah. And I, and I think another thing is important is if you don't have anybody and you don't want to go by yourself, there are tour companies you can go on whether, and cruises now are specialized yeah, in having are. single rooms for people. Or like if you're a young person, there's all kinds of young people. And I know not just a young retiree, maybe the university you went to, I know the university, oh, of Illinois, university of they Illinois, have, yeah. They, yeah, they have, you know, they have tour yeah. groups that take people around. Your local PBS your, yes, your local PBS. Okay, Jocelyn, thank you. Your you stopped on your local PBS station put stuff on. Like we're very big PBS people. Like they they put on events. Um, your church might have stuff going, and maybe it's yeah, maybe it's church. going to like go in the Philippines to help build churches or something. But there are a lot of things you can do to get out. So that that's kind of a nice thing. Now look for those different experiences. Yeah. So Sharon says, "Love your channel. Thank you. If you need to choose a country to visit that you never visited, which country will it be?" So, mom. What country would you want to go to that you've never been to before? Um, Iceland, uh, um, New Zealand, Bora Bora. Oh, fancy! You want to go for the either maybe, short flight or the long maybe flight? Maybe Jamaica. Jamaica's nice. Those are all those are all good places for me. Like uh, now that we got to Israel, Jordan, which are two of my big ones, I really want to go to. I think Egypt's on the top of my list. Yeah, place Egypt I want to get to good. that I haven't been to. Jo yes, Josh. Jocelyn, Bhutan, Ethiopia. Can you tell she gives up very easily? I'm tired. <laughs> Shocking. She goes to bed and I'm like, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. And she's on the phone for like two hours reading or something. So I love you, babe. She just closed up everything. There you go. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Colin, good to see you, my friend. Just got back from an all-inclusive resort in Putacana. Didn't drink the water. Smart move. Thanks for your advice. Didn't get sick. Yeah. 
that's one of those things. Some places you can, some places you can. <laughs> Joseph says, hey, Mark, in your don'ts of Amsterdam videos, did Jocelyn tell you not to take pictures of the girls? Um, I, I knew that one because you can get in trouble. Like back in the day, I remember seeing this. So my brother and I went to Amsterdam in the 90s and dudes would come, like guys would try to take pictures of the girls. They would come out, grab their camera and throw them in the canal. Like I, I, I still remember seeing them. I'm like, I don't, I mean, I think you'll get 36 pictures. But I was like, I don't my camera throw it in there, you know. So, so that was that was one of those those things. Ah, so everyone's saying hi, mom. So we got the hi, Kathy. Hi, guys. Let's see. Bring it here. <laughs> that way. Thank you, Stephen Rab. That's awesome. I appreciate some beverage funds for your one million sub party. Yeah, I don't know what it's gonna be. So for those of you who know, we're at nine hundred and ninety four thousand subscribers. So we're getting close to a million. Uh, but here's the thing. We're now at the end of August. We're in September. This is like our our channel literally goes into hibernation from about August 16th until December 26th. It is like if we if we're getting views, if people are watching, I'm I'm happy to do things. That's why I kind of do more lives now because I know people aren't really thinking about travel yet. So if I put out a lot of travel videos, they might not get watched. I'd rather answer people's questions to help them to help them. Brig Brig is trying to molest my mother. My dog is like, take the ball now. Um, so I do that. So I don't know what we're going to do because right now there's different things where you can kind of like see what's going to be. And I think I'm going to be at a conference when it's going on, but not like a cool YouTube conference where I could be like, Hey, Mr. Beast, I'm going to hit a million. Well, he hops up. No, 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 not like that. I want to be at a like work conference where I'm sitting there in my suit. And I have to do a presentation. I'm, I'm actually up for a award for like the best teacher, professor, teacher in the, in the country. Best, yeah. So I, I might be like, that might be going on. So I don't know if I'm hoping it's like live, but I know when we did our like 500,000 one, it was like perfect. So it was like on a Friday night at like 7 p.m. So it was like perfect, right? But this one, I'm like, it's going to be like 2 a.m. on a Tuesday when I'm sitting at a <laughs> conference hotel at an airport, like with bad internet, you know, I'm like, ha, you know, like, like that. So Stephen, thank you, my friend. It will be good to good use when we do hit that 1 million. And I got to say, Thank you, anybody, uh, all of you, for being subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you got other channels, subscribe again. Uh, but we don't say thanks because I mean, I never thought we'd be we'd ever get to this. You know, almost a million subs, I and mean, we've been doing this since 2009. And what's nice, the subs are great, the views are great. What, what's great is all the people that hop on here and say thank you for the travels. To know that we've been a part of your travels. I mean, that's like the best thing ever. It's like I, I help somebody out. I help somebody see more of the world. It's just, it's a really awesome thing. So thank you, everybody. And it's fun when my friends say, oh, your son, is, is he's just, I've used him for all my travel plans. So, I, yeah, so it's really nice. Thank you, everybody. So Gabe, who's probably gone now because he put this a few minutes ago. Last question, actually, before I'm hopping off. Will your one mil sub video have any OG Walter's World nostalgia? Silent title card saying da, 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 da. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll say quintessential 600 times. And I will have Caleb run and steal the camera at 17 versus three at the first one. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll have, well, I have, I have to figure something out. The thing is like, we've been, I've been traveling so much this summer. And then for those of you who don't know, I'm a professor. My day job's a professor and we're on the second week of school. And this is when everything's crazy, like all the meetings and everything. So getting anything done is impossible. So I'm trying to figure out what can I do for that? So, if like we get to hit the money and subs and I can't go live while it's happening, I will do like the unboxing of the golden play button. And that's where there's going to be like the nostalgia. We'll have a good time with that one. So let's see. Yes. Going back to the traveling alone, Richard makes a good point. There are a ton of great solo travel resources out there. And I think another thing is sometimes when people want to travel solo, they think they have to look up just solo travel advice. There's more you normal travel advice is great. If it's one person or 10 people. So, so just find some good stuff. Tom Shaner, the funniest man on the internet. You can see my Pittsburgherian. Let's see. Ah, the best food I had in Finland. So for those of you who don't know, I was exchange student in Finland back when I was a wee lad. About 120 pounds less than I am now. And 120 <laughs> times more hair on top of my head. My hair was actually even longer then too. But um, things I love. I love the salmon with cream and potatoes. That was good. Hesburger, the local fast food, is great. Um, I'm actually going to go back there 
I went back to Finland next spring to spend some time, do some more filming there. Cause I just, I really like it. So let's see. Lady Chaos, Mark, did you know that George Japan reacted to your don't do these things in Japan video? I want to go to Japan so bad, but I'm broke and travel is ridiculously expensive. Yeah. I mean, it is. And Japan is not a cheap place to get to. Um, if you look off season, though, you can get tickets cheaper to Japan than actually into Europe. So some to look into. But if you're coming from the U.S., I don't know where you're flying from. Um, so there's a lot of people that do uh, reaction videos to our don'ts things. And a lot of them, like I never find out until someone tells me, like, you, I didn't know somebody did a don'ts to Japan video. And it's funny because we have some videos that are reaction videos that have like millions of views. And I'm like, I wish I could have got that many views on the actual video. <laughs> so it is pretty funny, something like that. Yeah, Jocelyn in the background. Yep all the time bodega hey mark will you ever go back to slovenia yes we like slovenia you were there i joss and i were there. i've been yeah. there three times i'd go back i tell people a lot of times it's kind of like a hidden hidden yeah. gem like i know that gem. sounds so like he like like oh everyone says the hidden places but honestly it, it's something it special is a hidden gem. yeah here can you let's get a little bit closer to get it mama so next up Michael Misko, thank you very much for the super chat. I'm planning on traveling solo and taking the train from Cusco to Puno, then a bus into Bolivia in October. What do I need to see at Lake Titicaca? Okay, so I'm going to tell you right now, I almost I burned my entire face off when I was on Lake Titicaca. So when you take the boat out, because you're going to go to Puno, Puno it's not a long Puno. I'm not going to lie to you, but you're going to take the boat out to see those the floating islands, you know, the, where people stay, the reed islands and stuff. That's really cool. And you're going to take a boat out. And but the thing is, remember, Lake Titicaca is the highest elevation lake in the world, the navigable lake. You, I, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and the sun is super, super intense. Like my entire face was peeling off the next day. My lips were so bad because I was laying on top of the boat and I fell asleep. I was there, but I was solo traveling myself too, and I just got burned to hell. So basically, you have that main thing. Now, if you're going over to Bolivia after Bolivia afterwards, there's some really great ruins you can see when you're going by La Paz and stuff. That's a really cool thing, but you have a good you have a good trip. I enjoyed that. That's one thing I want to take because we were there. We didn't have enough time, but I want to take the kids through Lake Titicaca just so we can laugh forever and say, "Oh, it's Lake Titicaca," <laughs> and then go into Bolivia to show them that. So that you're gonna have a good trip, Mike. You're gonna have a good trip. Let's see. Thank you. So Joao Victor, hey Mark, you plan on coming to Brazil anytime soon? We were actually there in March, uh, so you'll be seeing some new Brazil videos coming. I think in October. Uh, we're going to be putting some more Brazil videos out uh, for for that. So when people are getting ready for like going in the summer, Brazil summer, summer, Brazil summer, December, January, February, get you ready for that. Okay, this is one. I used to travel a lot with the wife, but now we have a four-year-old and vacation feels like work since we don't have anybody that can watch him so we can have adult fun time. Any recommendations? Any recommendations? grandparents we actually take uh my parents have been with my kids to probably what 30 countries 20 countries 20 or 30 20, countries maybe like you've been to china you've been to all over south america, south america all over europe europe never in the u.s except to come to our house and babysit Bless and liam goes to visit you so that that's one thing we, we we've kind of sucked my my parents in by saying you know you just leave us with grandma and grandpa when we were kids, but now we're like you want to go to Peru and come yeah, with we'll us so we we'll go to Peru so that's how and, it, and one thing is is like it can be tough especially when they're little when they get a little bit older and they can like self sustain their entertainment that can actually make it easy like we've always traveled with our kids so it's always been a thing like honestly we've always traveled with our kids so that's for me it's hard to not travel with them I actually don't like traveling without them. So there's a family, uh, you know, family. Yeah. So group. thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Thanks, Dota Way. Congrats on a million. Thanks for all the great content, travel advice. Your videos inspired us to make our channel awesome. Going to London for Thanksgiving, favorite Christmas market in London and Thanksgiving. Well, yeah, they'll be out because England starts them early. If you want to Germany, Austria, they don't start until like the first weekend of Advent. Um, but London, what's the one? Just there. It'll come back to me. So it'll come back to me because there's some really nice ones there. I actually like going into the villages during Christmas time in England and Ireland and Scotland because everything gets dressed like with the lights and everything. It's just a really special, special mm -hmm. time. 
Yes, Tom, I agree. This is a great community. Thank you all for being so awesome with us. Crazy hair fedora bark is my personal favorite. Love finding those videos. Yeah, if I, go go see some of the old videos. You'll be like, wow, <laughs> editing. You don't know what that is. Wow, you have hair. Wow, you don't have a beard and you're not so fat. <laughs> Like I, I so today I'm putting together some of my old videos, like making a big compilation video for my classes I teach. So instead of students having to watch like ten individual videos, they can just watch one going through. And so I was sending those out to to work on. I'm like clicking on them, and some were like now, yeah, I filmed the last couple of years, but then was, some were coming up for like ten years ago. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like no beard, whoa, there's hair, hair. whoa, you're like a lot not heavy. So it was pretty funny. Hey, Jameson, have a very safe uh, road trip in two months. Greg, uh, advice for Ve Vegas in October, it's fine. Like, you have a good time, great food. Um, if you, I would, even, even in October, you don't think it's going to be a very busy time. I would book, um, if you want to go to any shows, I, I would get reservations for your shows that you want to go to. Okay, you want to answer, you want to do this one? Though? I can't read it. Okay, Eric asked. What is the worst thing to just wing it while traveling? I would say hotels. Yeah. My mom, see, my mom is a hotel like I want to know where I'm gonna she, stay. She wants to know where you're gonna say. And, and I would say the I will agree with her on the hotel part, but I'll only agree on this part. Don't wing your first night and last night hotels. True. Because when you get in, you want to make sure at least that first day you got something. If you can't find the other days, you go to another town. But if you're getting in that first, you know, you're gonna be tired. Disoriented, you, you put yourself in a little bit of danger. Had that first place, and then the last place, so at least you know, hey, I got a place to stay the day before a flight. Like those are two yeah. things you I want to make sure you can get from your hotel to the airport in the right amount of time. Yeah, and, and also I think don't I mean don't make it on safety, but most places you're going to travel aren't really unsafe. But it's always good just to at least have some. And it's it's kind of nice to know where you in some time some places where you want to eat because in some places. It's hard to just walk up and get something because you know how many times in Germany we've gone somewhere and you don't have a reservation, you're out of luck. You're out of luck, yeah. So photo tracker, trying to decide whether to cancel trip to Vancouver due to rain and smoke. Any advice? Yeah, th this is one of the things that's really tough because there's been times like we've we've had to cancel trips obviously with COVID, but also hurricanes, flooding, fires, uh, you know, like the Canadian fires going on now. And what we've done, because those places, I'm like, we want to come back later and, and support them. So we actually like, hey, I don't know when I'm going to come back. Could we have credit to use it again if we come back later? So you might just want to rebook it. Yeah. And the thing is now with a lot of the, the major airlines, they, they don't charge you anything for rebooking. So it's basically you're getting your money back to spend it later. It's not a refund, but at least you have it in credit. You can buy another ticket to go another time. And, and that's just if you don't feel comfortable going now, don't go. Go when you feel more comfortable. Yeah. You know, that's, that's one of those things. Um, let's see. Victoria, do you have a Croatia video? Yes, we have probably 12 Croatia videos. Actually, our Cro our five Love Nights of Croatia video, I think, was my first video that was like on Yahoo or something like that. So that was one of those early videos that get one a little viral. Yeah, Croatia is a wonderful place to visit. Yeah. So Abu Jagal, going to go to Israel. Anything I should know, especially safety-wise? Honestly, I felt pretty safe everywhere I went, even though it was weird when you see like normal people dressed up with like machine guns on them. You do feel, I mean, it's odd, but I did feel rather safe when I was there. Um, there were some things that happened while I was there that I was like, huh, but the locals were like, yeah, whatever. So like, I don't feel too unsafe. Um, you do want to be careful, I guess. Like, well, I say that when you drive around, that the driving is crazy. So be careful you're going to drive on your own. But like, I find if you're getting up to place like, if you're going up to like the Sea of Galilee, super safe. Everybody's getting along. It, it's actually quite nice. So, oh, here we go. So Diana from Adelaide, Australia. One of my like my favorite city. I went to in Australia when I was there. Adelaide is beautiful. I love Adelaide. So Diana, thank you for the, having a cool city. 11 a.m. Friday morning. I'm 71 years old and female. I travel annually on my own and love it. Never had any problems so far. Knock on wood for you. Leaving for the UK and France on, I'm going to guess, coming up. So, yeah, no, that's just it. You can go any age. I mean, it's not just, you know, 18-year-olds doing their gap year traveling. No, it's 71-year-olds from Australia, from Adelaide, Australia, going to do it. So, Diana, thank you for showing people that it's totally fine. You can do it. 
Yeah. Say, say hi to say hi to my cat spooky hi spooky hi, spooky <laughs> i'm a dog person though but i still yeah i i appreciate other people's animals oh leave it on thursday there you go there we got it we got it there that's tomorrow okay so any no, tips for today. a few days in shanghai so shanghai is huge i would recommend you've been there haven't you i love shanghai yeah joss yeah. i love shanghai too it was really cool the museum there oh yeah there's a, oh, there's a bunch of them that, yeah but the well Anyway, that was fabulous. Yeah, there, there's such but but I, I, costume, you know. Yeah, and, my and their mom collections were just fabulous. My mom's very much into folk art and costumes and like oh, cultural right. and stuff, yeah, so cultural. she always enjoys those. That's why, like, if you're in Central and Eastern Europe, they have a lot of culture, like folk museums, so she gets a kick out of that. But um, so, but for Shanghai, one thing I would say: this is one of those places. Take the hop on, hop off bus when you get there to get an overview of the city because it's huge. Just to get an idea, because there's the boon you can go on that has the view where you see the skyscrapers and everything on the other side of the river. That's cool. You want to get the soup dumplings where you put the straw in and drink it, but don't push it all the way through. Otherwise, you poke the soup out of the bottom and burn your hand. Yeah. Just FYI. Um, so that's something to kind of think about. But yeah, James, you have a good time. I like Shanghai's really Shanghai's nice. Shanghai's a really fun place. I was jumping off some. Oh, Jenny O'Shea she says, Kathy, you look amazing. I love your hair. Oh, thank you. Let's see. Oh, wow. Coast Life has got an awesome driving trip going around France. Looks good. That is fun. Yeah. Professor Walters, I live in LA, but from Wisconsin. Go Badgers. Mm, well, we all have problems. <laughs> what are your thoughts on moving to Prague permanently? It would be a cool, it's a cool city. Yeah, a cool. Um, for as popular as it is, it still is affordable. Um, I think that's one thing. I have a lot of students actually that I had when I taught in Europe that were Slovakian that moved to Prague, checked or went to Prague to work, and they enjoy it. They have a family there. So it's kind of a cool place to be. So let's see. Okay, this is actually a nice question. Richard Reed will ask, do you share Rick Steve's opinion that hostels are now for people of all ages? Considering staying at one during my trip, but don't be weird as the only 43-year-old dude there. Not the creeper. So here's the thing. You're right. Uh, especially like, honestly, in the 90s, there were hostels that were like, no, unless you're like under 25, you can't stay there. Now anybody can go. And some places, the hostels actually are better better options than hotels. Like when I used to backpack around South America, I would stay at hostels all the time because they were safe. They had a lot of stuff. A lot of people were there. And it was a full range from, I was like my 20s when I first started backpacking there. And there were people in their 70s going there. So it is really open for a lot of people. Also, even if you don't want to have the, the hostel experience with like six people in a room, a lot of them now have private rooms you can rent and just get that. So yeah, yeah I'm I'm with Rick acceptable. on that one. So Bodega Poppy, what are the don'ts of YouTube? Don't buy views, don't buy, don't buy subscribers, you'll get your channel banned. Don't spam people, don't make clickbait content uh, or clickbait titles that people won't watch. And uh, realize that content is king. You gotta have good stuff. You don't have to be, obviously, you don't have to be good looking and in shape, but if you have good content that helps people, it can go a long way. So, Correct. yeah, Vink was saying, I've lived in Tel Aviv for a year, I felt safe. Yeah, we walked all over, late night, early morning, no problem. Let's see. Stowed away. Also, thanks for all the whiskey, wine, Wednesdays during the pandemic, they helped keep us safe. Yeah, no, that's one thing is like, there's a yeah. lot of people over the years have come back. Like, I remember that whis those whiskey Wednesdays yes. helped us get through it because I mean, we have 226 people on here now. Thank you all. But we used to have like 2,000 people would be on those. And we were just talking and drinking. And I mean, we would go for like five hours a night. Like we yeah, drank. So, it was fun. We drank so much. It was fun. So much whiskey. <laughs> so much wine. But it, it was nice because you had a community. Yeah. Like mine. And we've, and we've met a lot of people from the community around the world. I've been traveling. So it's been really nice. Like some of the people on here have been answering questions from. So let's see. Oh, cool. Great. He's a member for four months. Hey, thank you very much for being a member, my friend. Hey, folks, what's your advice for going to New Zealand from Toronto going October 2024? So you could do the one where they have the insane long flight that's just a straight shot because there's actually one. I think there's going to be one from Dallas. So you can fly down with American because they well they don't code share because United code shares. So you can go with United, which code shares with Air New Zealand. So you could go if, oh, if you went Air Canada, Toronto to L.A., then L.A. to New Zealand, you could do that. Um, that might be the least connections. 
Um, it's going to be a long way anyway. I know some people think, should I go the other way around? New Zealand's too far. If you're going to go to China, like I've done it going to like uh, Finland and then done like an overnight in Finland and got to stay, spend time in Finland and get that, see that, and then continue on. But if you want, I would, no matter what you do, that flight's long. I've done, the, I've done LA, Sydney. It's long. There's nothing else to say about it, but it's long. So Greg, I think um, if you can get the ones that will get you to LA, then go from there. There's also like, there's ones with Dallas, but I don't know who coach, I guess you go Air, American Air, Air American Airlines. Yeah. Right. American Airlines, you can fly down from Toronto to Dallas and, and do that. So hope that helps, my friend. Chris Frankie, member for 40 months. My goodness, you can almost drive your membership. <laughs> my flight back from Barcelona is October is at 6 a.m. Is it still recommended to be at the airport three hours prior to flight? Yes. Um, Barcelona is not so bad. Two, you're probably okay at two hours in Barcelona in October. Um, but like some places like Israel, you gotta be there four hours, five hours. Or like we were there at three o'clock in the morning for a six a.m. flight, and we like we didn't have time to get food. We got time to go to a little like kiosk and grab some like a Snickers and stuff, and then get on the plane. We couldn't go to the restaurants and stuff because there was no time. But there, you, it's in Israel. You have to do a pre before you check in. You have to go into a pre-check kind of safety thing. So that mm -hmm. takes a lot of time. But yeah, but Barcelona probably two hours would be okay. Um, especially yeah, I mean. Chris, you you got my stuff. We we can we can talk about it. So, yellow yeah, should you agree with Rick Steves that naive tourists ruin traveling and is better in the past? No, that's a horrible thing to say. We were all naive travelers, like that. That's that's BS. That's when people say, "Oh, these new travelers." Are like we were all we were all kids at one time. It's like the people get mad with kids on plane. You were a kid. Like that's the thing. It's like you don't know what you don't know. So by traveling, you start to learn. Yeah, I'm gonna say every. Travelers smart and does great things. No, of course not. They don't. But I think one thing you have to realize is in terms of ruining travel, there's a lot of society things that are ruining travel. You know, it's like right. people don't have manners like they used to. People are so frustrated and there's so much pressure and with prices so high and that people just get really, ah, that's the thing you have to kind of think about. It's not naive travelers. It's just you people, learn as you go. You learn as you go. So that's one thing I do not, I do not agree with Rick on everything. Um, so that would be one of them. Let's see. Cavs just got back from Rio. Yeah, it can be a bit dangerous in Rio. I won't lie to you about that one. That is true. So any tips for walking around NASA on a cruise stop? Want to see some of the culture, et cetera? Okay, I'm not going to do it with NASA. I want to go in general when it comes to two, uh, cruise destinations. So you know cruises always offer you those, like, what do they call them? The, my brain is not excursions. working. Excursions. Thank day you. excursions. Those day, day trips, day excursions. Trips. Yeah. You know, let's go. You can do those. No problem. But it's going to be in a big bus. And that's not as much fun. What I recommend, if it's like NASA, it seems like you want to go around, you want to see things, you can look online and find really good local tour guides that know they have it all set up. They know when the tour, the the, the boats yeah. come, they're like, hey, I will be with a sign for you at the port when you walk out. We'll have you back in plenty of time. And then it's just you and them. And you're not worried because some lady has a question and asks 900 questions, so you never see anything. Yeah. Or you're not in a group where they can't keep up. And so you miss out on half the tours because, oh, they have problems. Because remember, when you're in a group tour, everyone's problem is your problem. That so, is Nora, so true. Yeah. I mean, you've had that on your cruises. You've yeah. been on. Oh, my dad. Don't even get my dad starling. Do not. I'm telling you, do not get my dad starling. <laughs> and some, you know, sometimes it is better to just do your own arrangements. You know mm -hmm. what you want to see. And maybe they haven't even thought about yeah. what you want to see. And yeah. you don't want to see what the group wants to see. And you're spending all that time waiting for 40 people to get on a bus. Yeah. So, Patrick, I'm going to Peru in two days. Do you have any tips? We've got a bunch of Peru videos um, to go through there. Great place. Great place. Fantastic food. Great place to eat. Like, so many great food things. Um, there are some political issues right now, but as a tourist, you're kind of being okay. If you're going to be in Lima, I would stay Maybe not in downtown Lima. I'd stay in Miraflores. That that neighborhood's a little bit better. Um, and hotels are relatively cheap there. So if you don't like what you're saying, you can go find some other place. Just eat. I mean, it sucks to eat the money, but sometimes it's better to eat the money and go some other place like Where we you did. Need to be. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because hot water sometimes is the problem. Yeah. So let's see. Edwards Hobbies. Hey, I want to say thanks to the Wisconsin video. It's so accurate. I'll be in Berlin in October for two days. Any recommendations or must dos? Okay, two days, not a lot of time, but Museum Island, there's a lot of museums there. 
The one you have to go see is the Pergamon, Pergamon. Museum. Yeah. They have the they have the Gates of Babylon there. They got the Pergamon altar there. It's for like historic stuff. You know when they talk about people yeah. stole stuff from the the Middle East to put in museums in Europe. That's that awesome. is like number two after the British Museum. Okay, yeah. but it is an incredible museum. You go see that the yeah. cathedral's right there. They've rebuilt the old palace across. They rebuilt the palace across the way where they tore down the old East German oh. parliament. Oh, wow. they rebuilt the palace, wow. so you can see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's really that. good. Um, October, Oktoberfest is already gone by the time you're there. But it's Oktoberfest, they just have a few parties in Berlin because it's not really a Berlin thing. It's a Bavaria thing, but people like beer. Um, I would go to Kreuzberg and have either Greek or Turkish food because you have great international food there. Oh, that's a really nice thing. It's hard to find German outside. Food. You mean like the um, Potsdam? Yeah, Potsdam. So if you go, also you can go, I mean, in two days it's tough, but you can take the local S Bahn, it's like the above ground train. Um, you can take it out to Potsdam where they have a bunch of palaces out there. There's a big park. There's a bunch of palaces there. You can wander around there. So that's pretty nice too. And just saying the the difference between the East and the West, but it's not nearly as much as it used to be, but it's yeah. still, it's still different. So James on Dizzle, I've got 30 something countries under my belt. Awesome. Mostly solo, but thinking I should do my first trip to India via tour group thoughts. Should I go so like I always do? What would you do? What would Walter's world do? Um, I think in India, you might want to be in a group. See, I would do them on my own. But I have a lot But I have a lot of students from India that are literally like, you're going to come and we're going to show and, you and around. And they're going to show you around. So that's a little different. I think here, here's my kind of thing. If you're used to going travel when you probably would want to do a group, it was a big, huge cultural difference and you're not really sure or you want to see a lot of stuff and you don't know how to kind of put it together or how transportation is going to be, then maybe a group would be would be a bit better if, so if you're a, an experienced a really experienced traveler you'd probably be okay yeah if you're i mean you, you'd be I, I think if you want to do it solo with 30 countries you probably could do it um but that's a big country yeah and again i don't know how far they're going to go yeah. but just kind of one of those things so josh my wife and i just got back from our summer honeymoon all over europe awesome congratulations mm -hmm. and your videos helped us prep and plan the entire thing so many thanks you're very welcome josh thanks for having on my friend i appreciate it have we ever been to San Marino? Yes, we actually have, I think, a 511 Hates of San Marino, what yeah. to do in San Marino video to help out. So just, just look up San Marino Walters World on YouTube, and it'll pop up. So let's see. Where Def Leppard rules rock. Good to see you again. Yeah. Where are your favorite places in Japan for the last month? I, I like Kyoto for me, because Kyoto, you can see the – historic like old japan kind of like oh that's so cool the temples and the gates and the unesco water herald site and the golden temple and all this but then also oh there's the manga museum you have like new stuff too so i think that's and it's it's a lot more manageable than tokyo tokyo is so huge i mean don't get me wrong kyoto is big but it's not tokyo tokyo is 25 million kyoto is a couple million maybe but yeah. kyoto for me it was my, my favorite one there so yeah let's see da, 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 da. oops W. Harris in Copenhagen right now, flying tomorrow morning to the Faroe Islands. What are your thoughts? I wish you were going a little bit later in the year so you had a better chance of seeing the Northern Lights um, because there's still a lot of light there right now. But uh, expensive, eat the fish. Um, yeah, I've, I haven't been. I have friends that have gone to talk about it all the time, though. So there is that. Let's see. All right. Well, ooh, it's 9 o'clock. I'm going to hop off here in a little bit. Ooh. Paul, Carl, Lucas, thank you very much for the super chat. I love the Barnes Foundation Museum in Philadelphia, room after room of Monet, Renoir, and Cezanne, incredible. Yes, and I think, Paul, you bring up a good point about Philadelphia. Like, the museums there are top-notch because you have the Barnes Foundation, you've got the Philadelphia Museum of Art. I mean, it is incredible. Yeah, revolutionary. Yeah, the Revolution Wars. I mean, they have so many things there that you can take in. But when people think of Philadelphia, they always rip on it. They're like, oh, they're so uncivilized there. They're so mean in Philadelphia. Well, that was a really cool place. It's a cool place. It's one of my favorite cities. Yeah, I don't like too. my mom set like literally my entire life. I was like, I love Philadelphia. If you ever want to go to Philadelphia, I'll go. If you ever want to Philadelphia, yeah. I'll go. Well, we went. We went. And it was a fantastic city. And yes, the museums and I go there. Back again. We yeah, go back. We go back again. It is yeah. it is an awesome place. All right. So, folks, it's been an hour. I want to say thank you everyone for hopping on. Thank you, everybody, for the super chats to help us keep making these great videos. And I just want to say thank you. We'll be back. Because, you know, we do have that million subscriber coming up soon. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody for all your support and everything. Justin says good night. My mom says good night. And thank so I wish you all the well. So I hope you all have a happy, fantastic. Happy travels. Happy travels. 
and have a great Labor Day weekend. And hopefully you have a safe travels this Labor Day weekend as well, wherever you're heading. All right, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye and thank you.